Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have brand new support out of Age of Overlord. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that Age of Overlord like and subscribe button so we can keep on climbing even higher, the 1200 ladder. We've actually got more support than just one card that was Mystical Beast stuff. And look, it's a very goth emo waifu. Yeah, you know this card's gonna be a quarter century secret rare, prismatic secret rare, goth emo titty rare. Like, this, this thing's gonna be a lot of money. I can already tell you that right now. So this is Tainted Treasures. No, not the really crappy brain-looking monster called Tainted Wisdom that lets you shuffle your deck. This is Tainted Spells and Traps, basically. We've got two different sets of monsters to talk about. The Dia Bell Star Dark Witch stuff with the Tainted Treasures. That sounds really disgusting now that I think about it. The Tainted Treasures. <laughs> and then we've got these Snake Eye Monsters to talk about as well. So let's start off with the Dia Spell Monster. This is like the main, I guess the Albaz card of the archetype. Like this is the main go-to monster. This is Dia Bell Star the Dark Witch. It's a level 7 Dark Spellcaster Effect Monster. 2500 attack, 2000 defense. So... Like, actually, this is literally like Dark Magician stat lines and attribute and everything. You can only special summon with the first effect of this card's name once per turn. You can only use the second and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. So you can special summon this card from your hand by sending one other card from your hand or field to the graveyard. That's generic AF. If this card is normal or special summon, you can set one Tainted Treasure spell or trap directly from your deck. Spoiler alert, there's a lot of Tainted Treasure spells or traps. That sounds so disgusting. There's no way that's going to get translated here in the U.S. It's going to probably be like Dirty Treasure or something. Like, There's no way they're going to call it Tainted Treasure. That just sounds so nasty. If this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard during your opponent's turn, you can send one card from your hand or field to the grave, and if you do, special summon this card, which means you then get the effect again since it was special summon to set a Tainted Treasure. I can't say that with a straight face from your deck. My god. So the name is actually after Bellstar, which is a famous western outlaw, which is why the spell card shows a wanted poster. I think that's kind of cool. So this is the Tainted Treasure Hunter Fiend. God, that I I'm, I'm, can't get over that name. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. Add one Dia Bellstar monster from your deck or grave to your hand. So it gets you the witch to your hand, which at the time of this recording, we only know about the one witch, like Dia Bellstar monster. So maybe we'll get more down the line as we get more reveals. So do keep that in mind that the more monster that they get, the more broken this Tainted Treasure becomes. <laughs> During your main phase, you can banish this card from your grave. Target one of your tainted treasure spells or traps that is banished or in your grave except itself. Place on the bottom of the deck, then draw a card. So you get to activate it and then add the Dark Witch from deck or grave to hand. And then you can just banish it to put another one on the bottom and draw. This card's really good. Um, then we have the Treasure of Doom Lucelia, which is a quick play spell. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. Target one level 7 or higher spellcaster monster you control. Apply these effects in sequence. Keep in mind it's any level 7 or higher spellcaster you, you control. So this is potentially Dark Magician support. Uh, that face-up monster is unaffected by other monster effects this turn, but send it to the graveyard during the standby phase of the next turn. All face-up monsters your opponent currently control lose attack equal to that monster's attack. Then if any of those monsters attack can be reduced to zero as a result, destroy it. We gotta take a sip of coffee for that broken effect. Ah, shout out to Duncan. Um, so you mean to tell me that we have a Slife of the Sky Dragon effect in a quick play spell for this archetype? This spell card is really good. Like, it's essentially Eagle Booster and Slifer of the Sky Dragon in one spell card. So if you have the Witch out, all the opponent's monsters lose 2,500 attack, and if they go to zero, then they just die. This, um, this archetype is looking, honestly, pretty good, ladies and gentlemen. Like, if especially if we get, like, more effect monsters to go along with the Dark Witch. Plus, we have the Snake Eyes stuff, which doesn't seem to be part of it. But they do have a card that's like a tainted treasure card. So we'll we'll get to that momentarily. But this seems really good. And then next up here, we have the tainted treasure of betrayal, Sylvia. Normal trap. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name per turn and only once that turn. Send one Dia Bell Star monster from your hand or face up field to the grave. Then target one face up card on the field and negate its effects. When your opponent activates a card or a card or effect in response to the activation of your Dia Bell Star monster's effect or tainted treasure spell or trap effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard and negate that opponent's effect. So an omni effect negation of a trap that is in the grave. So we've now upgraded Infernity Barrier S cards to be able to activate in the graveyard. So you can't even get rid of it with like a cosmic. You have to like DD Crow it. 
or you have to like just waste a negation on it. I'm also getting like Exosister vibes from this where like maybe we'll get more monsters besides just the Dark Witch. We'll get like lower level stuff and maybe it will kind of operate like Exosisters where your spells and traps kind of carry you and then the monsters go into like exceeds and stuff. It'd be interesting to see if they get like an in-house extra deck-esque monster. Next up here, along with all of these boatload of ads, also I love that YGO organization preaches about their Patreon and yet they have all these ads. That's like me saying, hey, go and check out my non-existent Patreon while I have like a sponsor for the video. YGO organization, you gotta fix your shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I say that in every video, but still. Next up here, we have Snake Eye Excel. So this is the other archetype that kind of ties in with the Dark Witch. I want to cover the Tainted Treasure card first since we were talking about that. And these Snake Eye cards are actually like really disgusting. So this is a, another Tainted Treasure card. So this is the original Tainted Treasure Snake Eye, normal spell. You can only activate one of the first and second effect of this card's name per turn and only once that turn. Set one other face-up card you control to the graveyard. Special some one level one fire monster from your hand or deck. That's pretty generic, actually. You can banish this card from your graveyard and then target one Snake Eye or one Dia Bell Star monster in your graveyard. So the, the witch thing. Uh, add one level one fire monster from your deck to your hand and place the targeted monster on the bottom of the deck. Um, it requires you to basically give up the first effect and only use it for the second, but it is a tainted treasure card. I don't really know if this will be played with the other stuff, but it's I, that's why I wanted to mention it because it, it does go hand in hand with the other stuff. So now let's go ahead and go back up at the top here and talk about this snake eye stuff. This snake eye stuff actually seems pretty interesting. Sorry, the whale had to drink his coffee. Um, this stuff seems really interesting. It's not as good with rekindling as I thought because the only monster that you can use rekindling on is the snake eye orc but they are all fires which means blaster is going to have a field day with this stuff so this is snake eye excel also they're they're fire pyros so no you you can't use uh, snake rain unfortunately uh, but level one fire pyro effect monster 800 attack a thousand defense you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn if this card's no more special summon, you can have one level one fire monster from your deck to your hand that seems pretty good i think volcanic shell is a level one you can send this card and one other face-up card to control to the grave special summon one snake eye monster from your hand or deck except excel so that's going to be like the the running trend with these snake eyes is that you can send themselves and then one other face-up card or like one other face-up monster you control to the grave special summon a snake eye monster from your hand or deck except itself um and if you remember we got that snake eye spell uh that was uh revealed earlier that like puts any monster on the field into the spell and trap zone as a continuous spell this archetype is literally like crystal beasts if they were actually like good <laughs> like I'm, I'm not even kidding they took the concept of crystal beasts with continuous spells and like just made it good <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna see what i mean here in just a second so this is snake eye orc level one fire pyro effect monster 900 attack 200 defense you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn if this card is normal or special summon you can target one of your level one fire monsters this banish or in your grave either add it to your hand or special summon it that's really good. You can send this card to one of the face-up card you control to the graveyard, special summon one snake eye monster from your hinder deck, except snake eye orc. So again, you see what I mean, where they can all like self-replace themselves, like just sending themselves in one of their face-up card to the grave uh, to summon out a new one. This is snake eye white birch, kind of looks like sprite carrot, believe it or not. Level one uh, fire pyro effect monster, zero attack, 2100 defense. You can only special summon with the first effect of this card's name once per turn. You can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. If you control fire monster, you special summon, you special summon this card from your hand. That's a really good extender. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can send this card in one other face up card you control to the grave. Special summon a snake eye monster from your hand or deck except itself. This is uh, one of the only few quick effect ones because the other ones aren't quick effects. This is like the big bad boss monster here. Snake Eyes Flamberge or Flamberge Dragon Level 8 Fire Dragon Effect Monster 3000 Attack 2500 Defense. You can only use the first, second, third effect of this card's name each once per turn. You can target one monster in the graveyard or face up on the field. Place a face up in its owner spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. That is disgusting. Any monster in the grave or face up on the field, so either side of the field or either grave, and put it as a uh, continuous spell. We're going to be playing Haman in this. No, I'm just kidding. We're not We're not going to do that. But the fact that, like, you can get the opponent to, like, waste their Baron, and then you summon out this and make their Baron be a continuous spell, uh, yeah, that, that's going to feel bad, man. Like, imagine me playing, like, Sprite purely, and I've got, like, a whole board set up ready to go, and they, like, just take my Sprite Spind or something and make it a continuous spell. Like, that. that's how you put Yu-Gi-Oh! players on tilt instantly. <laughs> Shout out again to Duncan. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you could target one monster card on the field, treat it as a continuous spell, special summon it to your field. <laughs> ha! 
You take the Baron's special summon at your field. You now have an Omni Negate. GG. <laughs> if this card's set for the hand or field of the grave, you can special on two level one fire monsters from your grave. So you send this, and then you get out the one that looks like Sprite Carrot to have a quick effect. Seems pretty good. Uh, this is the Shrine of Serpentine Sight Snake Eye. Field spell. You can only activate one card with this card's name for turn. This field spell is actually pretty good. When this card resolves, you can place one Snake Eye monster from your hand deck or grave. Face up in its owner spell and trap zone is a continuous spell. This seems pretty good. Level 1 fire monsters you control gain 1100 attack. So those low attack ones actually gain a decent amount. Once per turn of your opponent, normal special summons a monster monsters. You can target one monster card on the field. Treat it as a continuous spell. Special summon it to your field. So even if you can't summon the monster that turn, then you can still at least go, okay, well, I've got Serpentine Sight, so the moment they summon, I can bring the monster out to my field. Uh, this is, uh, oh, we already read the Tainted Treasure. And then last but not least, we have the Trap card, the Glaring Ruler Snake Eyes. Normal Trap, you only activate one card with this card's name per turn. If the total levels of all Snake Eye monsters you control equal two or more, activate one of these effects, which won't be hard to do because they all summon themselves in another one. Target one monster in your opponent's graveyard or face-up field. Place it face-up in spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. That's really good because you can just summon it to your field. Target one monster card on the field. Treat it as a continuous spell. Special summon it to your field. I get sprite double-cross vibes from this trap card. Like, it's very um, flexible and adaptable as to, like, what it can do. And I, honestly, like, I'm really excited for this archetype. It seems really good on paper. I'm going to have to kind of let these effects sit in my brain for a little bit. Um, but... Just at face value, it seems really good. The Dark Witch stuff seems decent, but I think, like, this Snake Eye stuff is really, like, what's going to be good. Like, just at face value, if I had to guess off the top of my head, I think it's going to be, like, Tier 2. Maybe Tier 1, depending if we get more support or not. Um, hopefully this isn't something like, okay, it's here in Age of Overlord. Then you got to wait until the next set, uh, Phantom Nightmare, to get more stuff from it. Or more stuff to support it. Guys, let me know what you think about this, what seems to be a really broken archetype, down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.